In the last video, I showed you how to create a Deoxys full stack web application by creating a simple blog app. And we used Deoxys's full stack feature to create server side functions that interacted with an SQL Lite database. And so in this video, we are going to remove the full stack feature from Deoxys and implement a separate backend server using the Axum web framework. And by doing this, we are going to maintain two separate projects where Deoxys is going to be used on the client side and Axum is going to be used on the server side. And so the goal is going to be to move the server side functionality out of Deoxys and implement it into a separate backend server using the Axum web framework. Now, in case you've not seen the last video, these are the two server functions that we have in our Deoxys blog app at the moment. So we have a create post that will create a post for us and a get post which will return an array of posts. And so these are the two functions that we want to re-implement in our separate backend server. So let's start by creating a new cargo project and I'm going to call this blog server. So once the project's been created, we can cd into the directory and start adding the required dependencies. So the first dependency that we're going to add is the Axum web framework. And since Axum relies on the Tokyo runtime, we'll also have to install Tokyo. Now there are other libraries that we need to install and we'll install those libraries as and when we need to. For now, let's go ahead and use Axum to set up a basic route that returns a static string. And this is so that we know that the server is working correctly and can respond to client requests. So here is the default main function in our newly created blog server project. And the first thing that we're going to do is make the main function asynchronous. And then once we do that, we can annotate it with the Tokyo main macro. But this is going to leave us with an error, but we can easily fix this by adding the full feature to the Tokyo dependency. And so with the error fixed, we can start using Axum to serve our first root. And we're going to do that by using the router type. So we create a new instance of the router. And on this instance, we can call the root method. And the root method takes two arguments. The first is the root path, and the second is a method router. And the method router takes a root handler. And this handler can be a function or a closure. And essentially, the handler gets called when the root is matched against the request method. So in this case, I set up a root with a root path that will only respond to a get request by calling the home handler. And now we can implement the home handler, which is just an asynchronous function that returns a static string. And now we need to create a socket server. And we'll do that by using Tokyo's TCP listener and bind the server on the local address using the port 8080. And finally, we need to serve the root using the TCP listener, and we can do that by using Axum serve function. And so we now have a basic Axum server. Let's go ahead and compile the code and test the root to make sure it works. So the server is working fine, and as you can see, it's responding to the root path with the home handler. So now we can start the process of implementing the Deoxys server functions that we created in the previous video into our Axum server. But before we start that process, we'll need to install two additional crates. The first is the RustQLite crate so that we can access the database from our Axum server. And the second is the Serdi crate so that we can serialize and deserialize the data between the client and the server. So now that we have these two crates, let's go ahead and implement the Deoxys server functions into our Axum server. So the first function that we're going to port over from Deoxys is the get post function. But rather than code everything from the beginning again, we can just go ahead and copy the code from Deoxys and with some small changes, we should be able to get it to work. So here is the Deoxys get post function and I'm going to copy everything up until the OK variant and paste this code into our Axum get post handler. Now, as you can see, we have a few errors. So let's go ahead and fix these one at a time. So the first fix that we're going to make is to import the JSON type so that we can return the vector of posts as a JSON array of objects. Now, because we're no longer returning a static string, I'm going to change the return type to IMPL into response. And finally, we have one last error, and that is that the post type doesn't exist, but it does exist in the Deoxys app. So let's go ahead and just copy the code from there. So now we have some new errors, but these errors are really regarding not being able to find the deserialize and serialize macros. But we can easily fix this issue by enabling the derive feature for Serdi. So now that we've resolved all the errors, let's go ahead and compile the code and test that the root works. And so finally, we have our first API endpoint that returns a list of posts that we created in the previous video. And so all we have to do now is call this API endpoint from our Deoxys app, and we can do that quite simply by making a fetch request. So here is the Deoxys get post function. And currently it's a server-side function that connects to the SQLite database and returns a list of posts. 
but we're going to change it so that uh, it's no longer a server-side function, but rather a client-side function that's going to make a request to the API endpoint that we just created. But first we need to install a library that can make HTTP requests. And for that, we're going to install the request crate. Now it's important to note that Deoxys essentially runs in WebAssembly, so not every crate that you install is going to work. So I recommend before you install a crate, read the documentation to determine if that crate actually supports WebAssembly. Okay, so now that we have the request library installed, we need to enable the JSON feature. And with this change, we can now start to refactor the get post function. So we're going to remove this code and replace it with a get request to the get post API endpoint that we just created. Now this function is no longer going to return a result, rather we want it to return a vector of type post. Now you can see that we have an error and that's because this function is no longer intended to be a server side function. Rather, we're going to use it as a client side function. So we need to remove the server attribute from this function. And finally, there's just one last thing that we need to do, and that's to remove the call to unwrap where we're actually calling the get post function. And so now we're at the point where we can test the integration between the Deoxys app and the backend Axiom server. So we're going to start by first compiling the Deoxys app. And as you can see, there are no errors. So now let's go ahead and compile the Axiom server. Now the Axiom server has panicked and exited. And if we take a look at the error message, it says address already in use. And that's because both Deoxys and our Axiom server is configured to run on port 8080. Now I did this somewhat deliberately because I wanted to highlight that even though we're using Deoxys as a client side application, and by client side, I mean on the browser, it's still running on its own server. And the default port that it's using is port 8080. And so when we created our Axiom server, we also ran that on port 8080. Now we can fix this quite easily by changing the port number on our Axiom server to port 8081, but this is going to raise another issue. So let's change the port number on the Axiom server to 8081 and see what the new issue is going to be. So now the Axiom server is going to run on port 8081 and we'll also need to make the change to the HTTP request as well. So with this change, let's go ahead and run the program again and see what happens. So you can see we're not getting the list of posts and if we take a look at the Deoxys console log, we see that there's an error. Now this error message isn't very descriptive. All it's telling us is that it's failed to make a request. So let's take a look at the browser's dev tool to see if there's any further information on the error. Now looking at the browser's console log, we're getting more information as to what the error is. So this appears to be a cause related issue. And that's because the Deoxys app and the Axiom server are using two different ports. But thankfully we can solve this issue by using the cause feature from the tower HTTP crate. And now we can use the cause layers type from tower HTTP and add it as a middleware on the router instance. Now here I'm using the permissive option and that's going to pretty much allow everything. But for the purpose of this video, we'll just go ahead and use it. Now let's compile and run the code again. And this time we should see the list of posts being served by the Axum server. And so finally our get post API is working. And so the only thing that's left to do now is to create the create post API. So let's start by creating a new route and call it create post. And the only difference here is that we're going to be using the post function for the method router. And the create post function isn't going to return a value. So we'll just return an okay status instead. Now, once again, we don't need to write the code. We can just copy it from the Deoxys create post function. Now notice that we have two errors here. Post title and post body are variables that don't exist in our Axum function. So instead, what we're going to do is create a new type called post entry, and we're going to encapsulate those fields into that type. And now we can use the post entry type as the generic type to the JSON type in the create post function. So essentially, when we send a post request from the Deoxys app, the data is going to get deserialized into this post entry type. And so now we can just replace the post title and the post body with the fields from the post entry type. And finally, the server is now complete, but there's still a few things that we need to do on the Deoxys app. We need to make a HTTP post request to save the blog post. Now I'm going to copy the post entry type and paste it into the Deoxys app because we're going to use this type to post the data to the server. And so all we have to do now is change the create post function to make a post request to the create post API endpoint that we just created. Now notice how we're using the post entry type here. The create post function receives the post title and the post body as arguments. So we can use these arguments to construct a new post entry type. And because the post entry type derives so deserialized, we can pass it to the JSON method. And finally, there's just one last thing that we need to do, and that's to remove the call to unwrap where we're actually calling the create post function, because remember this function no longer returns a result. So now let's compile and run the code for the last time. And if I enter a new post and click on the save button, you can see that post appear in the list of posts. 
So to summarize this video, we replaced the Oxys' full stack feature with a separate backend server that we've created using the Axum framework. If you want to look at the code, you'll find the link in the description. And if you found this video useful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and I'll see you all on the next video.